713 WMAZ Morning starts now. Not a bad looking start to the day, but it is plenty humid out there. Heat index values are going to soar today. I'll let you know how hot we'll be and time out all the rain and storms. That's coming up. A boating accident on Lake Tobisaki turns deadly, leaving several others hurt. What we're learning about how the accident happened. And if trash pickup's been a problem for you, well, help could be on the way in Bibb County. What areas will see the impacts? Central Georgia, get ready for another major traffic change. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in just a few minutes. Well, good Monday morning. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. I mean, just look at the sky looking absolutely beautiful. The time is now 631 AM on this July 26th. I'm Wanye Reese and I'm Caitlin Heck. And as we enter this last week in July, it wouldn't be July in Central Georgia without some almost triple digits. Exactly. Right? <laughs> wouldn't be right. That's right. Yeah, I don't think that uh, Central Georgia would let us buy as much as we've been talking about. Oh, it's been such a cool July. It's been so wonderful. Haha. -ha. Think again, everyone. It's going to be hot this week. We'll talk about it in a minute. Right now, some dense fog starting to form in parts of Dodge County. Otherwise, really not a bad looking start. A beautiful view to get the day going here in Macon. 74. It looks pretty. Doesn't feel quite so pretty out there with that humidity in play. Dew point in the low 70s. That's what's causing it to feel quite sticky as you head out the door. 74 in Warner Robins, 75 in Montezuma, 76 in Monticello, 73 in Thomaston, and 72 in Dublin and in Wrightsville. So we are a few degrees warmer than this time yesterday, and that is going to be a trend as we head through the afternoon. We will be several degrees warmer. Yesterday we topped out at 93 in Macon, and I do think we'll head into the mid-90s today. By lunchtime, though, that heat index value already will be over 100 degrees in most spots. So let's talk about how hot we're going to be today and even more so by the end of the weekend. Of course, time out all the rain and storms on the way. Also have some tropics to cover. Got lots going on. I'll have all those details in a few minutes. Well, thank you, Courtney. This hour we start with an update to a story that we first brought you over the weekend. Now we are learning more about a deadly boating accident on Lake Tobosofki as the Georgia Department of Natural Resources investigates. So it happened around Sandy Beach, leaving one dead, six others hurt. The state DNR says they got a call just after 3.30 Saturday morning about a boating crash on the lake. The department says it involved a pontoon boat and a small speed boat. They say the smaller boat with two people in it crashed into the pontoon that had seven people in it. Everyone on the pontoon boat was hurt. Bibb County Coroner Leon Jones says two of the seven hurt went to the hospital with skull fractures. Jones says 22 year old William Childs died. There's no word on the condition of the others. Fish and Pig Restaurant closed through the weekend after posting that several people on that pontoon boat, including the person killed, worked there. The search continues this morning to find the shooter in a deadly shooting that happened in downtown Macon. The sheriff's office says that it happened just before one Saturday morning around the corner of Cherry Street in Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. They say they got a report of a large fight on the sidewalk where someone fired shots. The shooting left two dead and two others hurt. We currently don't have any details on the shooting. If you have any information, you can call the Macon Regional Crime Stoppers. That number is at the bottom of your screen. It's 1-877-68-CRIME. Again, that number, it's 1-877-68-CRIME. Right now, Macon's homicide numbers stand around the same spot they did last year with 34, according to Coroner Leon Jones. Violent crime is something Macon Bibb County leaders are trying to cut down on. That means getting your input. Tonight, they'll hold the third of several Macon Violence Prevention or MVP forums. Mayor Bro Tim and District 5 Commissioner Seth Clark will host it. The forum is at the Frank Johnson Recreation Center in Unionville that starts at 6. Also tonight, there's a forum for ministers and faith leaders. It's at the Government Center on Poplar Street from 630 to 8. All two teens now face charges after Perry police found a man dead at an apartment complex. The department says it happened around 1115 Saturday night at the Mason Terrace Apartments. When police got there, they found 77 year old Willie J. Cox shot several times. He died there. The department says officers were told a man and woman were seen walking away. Investigators later found the pair. 19 year old Cornelius Murray of Americas faces a murder charge. 18 year old Natasha Culpepper of Centerville faces a murder party to a crime charge. Both are at the Houston County Detention Center. Turning down to news from across the state, four companies could face hefty fines following a January nitrogen leak at a Georgia poultry processing plant. Six workers died. The Associated Press says federal workplace safety officials are proposing nearly $1 million in fines. The AP says U.S. Labor Secretary Marty Walsh announced the citations and fines by the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration on Friday. Foundation Food Group owns the Gainesville plant. It was cited for 26 violation 
with a proposed fine of nearly $600,000. A legal medical marijuana production could be coming to Georgia over the weekend. The state's Access to Medical Cannabis Commission announced six companies were chosen to get licenses. Two were chosen for Class 1 licenses, four for Class 2. Now, Class 1 license holders are authorized to grow cannabis only in indoor facilities for use in producing low THC oil limited to 100,000 square feet of cultivation space. Class 2 can only grow in 50,000 square feet of space. Georgia's plans for some federal coronavirus relief money now getting government approval. The AP says the U.S. Department of Education announced this approved the state's plan to use $1.4 billion in relief money. Federal officials already distributed two-thirds of the $4.2 billion that Georgia schools got under the American Rescue Plan. Most of the money is being directly allocated to Georgia's 180 plus school districts with $425 million held by Georgia's Board of Education to address statewide needs. Georgia's plans calls for developing state level academic recovery specialists, increased summer and after school learning and establishing school based health clinics. The fight against blight continues in Macon today as the city plans to start its second round of demolitions. Earlier this year, Mayor Lester Miller announced the goal of tearing down 30 homes in 30 days. The county removed 44 blighted houses in the first round. 40 houses are included in the second round. Demolitions, they start around 830 this morning with a house on Warsham Avenue in South Macon. All starting today, you could see a boost in your trash pickup in Macon. The county says Ryland Environmental will temporarily pick up trash, recycling and yard waste for about 20% of Bibb County. The group will collect trash every week, yard waste and recycling every other week. They're expected to help out for about six months. This will only affect areas you see here on your screen. So you can see it includes some areas of south of Highway 80 and east of I-475. The county says you should have gotten a card in the mail last week letting you know about the new pickup date. And if you work at or near Robbins Air Force Base, your commute may get a little easier today. Always good news on a Monday. The base says they plan to reopen the Russell Parkway entrance gate at noon today. They say when that happens, the Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard gate will close. All gates will return to normal operations. Right now, the MLK gate currently opens at 5 to inbound traffic. All right, time is now 638 wherever you are going today. Just be prepared oh, yeah. for that heat. Hot. Yes, and so humid. It's one thing when it's hot, you know, but it's another thing when it's humid. Right. And yeah, uncomfortable. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah un uncomfortable. It's just quite honestly gross outside. There's no in the most meteorological way to say it. Right now you're looking live on top of the fairgrounds. A little bit of a hazy look out there. We do actually have some fog that is around the area that is simply a low lying cloud. It's just not at the surface. It's really just at clock tower height there. So making it look a little bit hazy out there. 73 right now in the city of Perry. I feel for all these workers out there. Boy, is it muggy out there. Dew point in the low 70s. So it is as saturated as it gets there in Houston County. 74 in Macon, 74 if you're getting ready to head out in Warner Robins and in Butler, 76 in Monticello, 70 degrees in Eastman and 72 in Dublin and in Wrightsville. All that humidity still thanks to high pressure down to our south pulling in a lot of Gulf moisture. We have a trough, which is just an area of low pressure that's going to serve as a focal point for showers and storms. Helps give a little lift in energy for showers and storms to form, which is why you're seeing already a little bit of rain pop up out in Tennessee. Down off the Florida coast near Jacksonville, there is a low and the National Hurricane Center still keeping an eye on that. However, it is looking less and less likely that that is going to form into anything, especially now that it's starting to interact with land a little bit. So it doesn't look like it's going to uh, form into any kind of tropical system. Now, as we go through the day today, and we'll cover that in just a second what the National Hurricane Center has to say about that today. Big story here at home is going to be that heat and humidity. So if you do work outdoors or for those students that are trying to enjoy the last few days of summer break, be sure you are drinking plenty of water. Stay nice and hydrated. Notice by 11 o'clock, it's already going to feel more like the low 90s. That feels like temperature is in yellow and the temperature at the surface is in white. Today, temperatures are going to climb into the low to mid 90s. This is the RPM, the temperatures. I think it's running just a degree or two cool. So add a degree or two onto these numbers and that's where we'll top out today. Just a couple of scattered showers and storms. I have us at a 30% chance for rain 
today. The big story is going to again be that heat. Triple digit feels like temperatures for several hours. He, uh, heat index values could be as high as 105 to 106 degrees. As we head through the overnight low to mid 70s to wake up tomorrow morning and notice we'll do it all over again tomorrow with those feels like temperatures climbing into the triple digits. However, we are going to have a more widespread rain chance for tomorrow. Maybe could have a strong storm or two with gusty wind, heavy rain, frequent lightning, and that's going to keep our temperatures in the low 90s for the day tomorrow, but still going to feel plenty hot and humid. It's not going to help with those heat index values for the day tomorrow. Now, as we head into the rest of the work week, we're only going to get hotter, so just prepare for that. Let's cover what's going on in the tropics. 30% chance of development over the next two and five days. So again, the likelihood of this forming continues to go down as the National Hurricane Center comes out with outlooks. Not going to bother us here in central Georgia. It looks to be simply a rainmaker for the Florida and Georgia coastlines. We are actually going to be mainly dry come Thursday and Friday, and what that means is our temperatures are going to go up. We could potentially see our first triple digit heat day, say that five times fast, of 2021 for Thursday and Friday. It's a potential. I don't have us at 100 degrees just yet. It does look like, unfortunately, we'll have another front roll through as we head into the weekend, and that could increase our coverage of rain and storms. Your seven day looks like this mid 90s today, low 90s with a higher rain chance for Tuesday and Wednesday, near triple digit heat for Thursday and Friday. We're back in the low to mid 90s with higher rain chances come the weekend. This afternoon, a major traffic shift is going to take place starting at Georgia Highway 247. I'm Taylor Hicks, and I'm going to give you all of the details in just a few minutes.